Hey, Brian Young here. Thanks for joining me. This video is on managing your FBA inventory. So if you've decided to sell FBA, Fulfillment by Amazon, and you have some items at the Fulfillment Center, this is the area where you can manage that inventory, move things around, have things removed, have things destroyed, and so on. And to get there, you just go to Amazon Seller Central, go to the drop-down inventory menu, and click on Manage FBA Inventory, and it'll bring you to this page right here. Now right at the top you're going to see some options. If you go to all inventory view, that's going to show you all your inventory. So Merchant Fulfilled um, and FBA both. But this is just FBA. Up in the right hand corner you'll notice international shipping. We are registered to ship internationally. I think there's, not, there's no reason why you shouldn't be. It's a FBA Global Export. And so how it works is people can come on to Amazon.com, so the U.S. version of Amazon. They can find a book, they can buy it, and they can ship it out to them internationally. Now, there's another, there's another way to sell internationally, and that's to actually ship your f items, your books, to fulfillment centers in the U.K. Because there's, there's a, a, a website, an H, uh, actually HTML, that's a Amazon.uk, there's Amazon.ca, which is Canada. I mean, there's different versions of Amazon in all these countries, and they separate products based on countries. But if somebody from, let's say, Spain really wants a book and they can't find it on their version of Amazon, they can go to Amazon.com, and they can look up, they can look up all the listings, and if you are set up for FBA Global Export, they can order from you and have it shipped. Now, it's all the same standards apply, like Amazon handles all customer feedback and stuff. And we haven't had any, literally, we haven't had any problems. I don't think I've, I've issued a refund for any item that was ordered internationally. And I think that's the big concern, that if somebody in, in Egypt orders my item and they're, they're scamming me and they keep it and they, and they get refunded and, and I get in trouble, you know, it's just too much headache. I'd rather stick within the U.S. But I, I don't think that's, that's an issue. I don't think that's a problem at all. And you don't have to worry about doing any of the fulfillment. The other stressor involved with shipping internationally is you got to, you know, go fill out the customs form, and then you got to, you know, make sure you have enough postage and and track the package, and you know, kind of holding the customer's hand along the way. Amazon is an expert at logistics; they're an expert at shipping domestically and internationally, and they do a fantastic job. So I highly recommend you sign up for international shipping. You do that by clicking on the blue link there. Now, if you keep scrolling down, it's going to show you all your Amazon fulfilled inventory. So this is all the inventory that's either inbound on its way to the fulfillment centers or fulfillable or unfulfillable or reserved. And we're going to walk through each of those. If you wanted to search really quick, you could up here, if you're looking for a particular item, you can do a text search. You can search for a quantity in fulfillment center. You can search for items that have an error status that are red listed. And you can search for items based on price as well. And right below that is the storage monitor. Now, if you've only been selling on Amazon FBA for, I think it's like three, four years, like us, like I think it was right when we started, they put the storage monitor in place. They limit how many standard and oversized items you can have at a fulfillment center at a time. So we're currently at 28,202 standard size items out of a, a maximum, up to a maximum with 134,000 units. And then our oversized units were at 672. Those aren't books at all. We sell we sell things other than books, as you'll see. And um, the 672 items represent items that are bigger than your standard size item. And we have an 800 limit, a unit limit for that. So if we get close to that limit or we hit that limit, then we they won't, Amazon won't even let us ship oversized uh, sized items in at all. We just have to wait until the other ones sell. Now, if you have storage issues if you if you are new to Amazon you might have a 5000 limit which could be problematic if you want to start uh, you know a business a book selling business that's going to bring in good passive income in a previous module i addressed the storage mon uh, storage limit limitations how to tackle that how to get that limit raised so be sure to check out that video so if you scroll down a little further you're going to see these are all the items and they they sort them in a variety of categories they organize them by merchant SKU. So this is your M SKU. This is the listing identifier that you you pick when you list your items. It has a title of the item, the condition of the item, uh, whatever condition you selected, the price of the item, and you can change this price and then um, hit submit prices, and it it will go live. So this is this is also a place where you can be uh, changing the price of your items. And now there's there's four columns, and all of these you can play around with to kind of get an idea of where your inventory is at. If you click on this one. Inbound, qu inbound items are items that are on their way to Amazon. So you've listed them, 
and you ship them off and they're on a UPS truck somewhere on their way to Amazon. They'd be considered inbound. So let's click on that. So you see under inbound it has, these are all the books. These are a handful of books that are on their way right now to the Amazon Fulfillment Center. And we have our default, default price set at $25. As soon as they get to Amazon they'll be repriced up to their um, more competitive price before they have a chance to sell. But you see there, these are all my inbound units. So if you're ever wondering what, what's what's going on uh, with a particular item, you can't find it, maybe it's inbound, maybe it hasn't been, been received yet. If you click on the fulfillable column right here, now this is items that are currently available to be sold on Amazon. So they've been shipped in, Amazon's received them and shelved them, and they're active for sale. So if you were to go to an Amazon listing page and look up a particular item that's on this that, that uh, populates this column, it would be available to be purchased by an Amazon customer. So by clicking on this column here, you'll see here's some of the items that we have that are fulfillable uh, right now that are currently active for sale. Understanding psychology, you know, a few books here, and their prices. Now unfulfillable inventory is inventory that's at the Amazon warehouse that has been deemed unsellable. And we'll click on the column there. Now there can be a variety of reasons why items are considered unfillable. And to find out, you just click on the, the little red number here, and it'll tell you exactly why they have this item in storage, but it's not available for sale. And for the, so for this particular book, is warehouse damaged. Now that's that means that there that the Amazon warehouse is admitting ownership for that book being damaged. Again, another warehouse damage. This one's considered defective. So what happens is when a customer orders a product from you, a book. If, it, if it's not as advertised, if it doesn't work, if it's defective, they can mark that as one of the reasons why they want to make the return. And then when Amazon gets that product back, they're not going to relist it. Because typically what happens when product is returned for any reason other than defective is Amazon will look at it, the warehouse employees will, and they'll decide whether or not it's resellable at the, in its current condition. If it is, they'll put it back on the shelf and it'll become fulfillable again and then a customer come along and buy it. But if the customer said, no, this item is defective and sent it back, Amazon will immediately put it in an area where it's not available for sale, where it's unfulfillable, and, and this is where it would end up, un under uh, defective. So that's going to be an item that you're going to either need to destroy or have removed. And I'll talk, talk about that in a minute. More defective. Um, customer damage. So this one is, so this one, they're putting, they're putting the ownership on the customer. So defective is kind of more so putting the ownership on you as a distributor. They're saying that you sent the defective product in and went to the customer, the customer returned it, and now what do you want to do with it? Now if it says customer damage, that means that they're putting the ownership on the customer. They're, they're probably saying, well, how can a book be defective in all actuality? It's a book. And so in this instance, the Amazon employee determined that it was a customer that, that damaged it. Now the other one is distributor damage. So I was hoping that this one would come up. This means that when you send in a box of books, let's say, and the Amazon employee opens up the box and sees there's a book on top, and maybe the book looks more damaged than it should. I mean, look at the back. This particular book is in, was, was supposed to be in used very good condition. So if they determine this book is not in used very good condition, maybe because it got damaged during shipping, then they will label it as distributor damaged, and it'll go to unfulfillable status, and then nobody will be able to buy it, and you'll have to figure out what you want to do with it. That's your fault. That's not Amazon's fault. It's not the customer's fault. It's your fault. So that's going to be something you're going to need to pay to, to remove. And your warehouse damage. You see all these here. And so what I've what we've done is we've set up our account to automatically remove unfulfillable items. And I'll, I'll also I'll touch on that as well in, in another video. And the final column, which is probably my favorite column, is the reserved column. Now, a reason why a book could be reserved has multiple reasons. The reason number one, reason number one is that that book is being prepped for sale. So let's say somebody bought it, it's reserved. So it's not fulfillable anymore. It's reserved. They've paid for it. Amazon is in the process of shipping it to the customer. So that's a good reason to have something reserved. Another reason is they're moving the items around. So it's not inbound anymore. They received it at a fulfillment center, but maybe they're doing some cleaning, or maybe they're doing some reshuffling, or maybe they're moving your one item to another fulfillment center. If that's the case, then they'll reserve it because they don't want that item to sell if they don't know exactly where it is because they can't promise uh, the super fast shipping that they do. So that's another reason. Also, you'll notice that sometimes the number fluctuates in the reserved column. So right now, this book right here is Bondage to the Dead, Poland and the Memory of the Holocaust. $112 book, there's two reserved. 
Now I'm under the impression that there's really only one there, but that two does that two is sometimes signifies the number it signifies what they're doing with the item. And I'm not really quite sure what a two means, but just keep that in mind. If you see that number go up and down to three to four, don't get you know too bent out of shape. Just wait until the storm settles and there's a calm and you'll see exactly what has happened. It'd either sell or it'd be back into your fulfillable inventory. But the reason why I really like the reserve column is because you can anticipate, you know, as you're scrolling down and looking at all these items, you can say, wow, these items are selling. You can get really excited. When I see a $112 book at the top of the page here, that gets me really excited because then I, I know that I'm going to be able to sell a high dollar book. And that's exactly what we're in this business for. Now, the next column over is a fee preview. It's going to show you, it's going to show you how much in fees you can expect to be taken out. For this product, so this book right here that's $112, Amazon's going to take 20. So that just gives you time to just look back and forth and determine the profitability of your items. You can reprice your items here. You hit, you, you change the price. You can hit submit price up in the upper right hand corner, and it will change that price in live time. And then over here on the right hand side, you'll see unit volume in cubic feet. So if you hit this button right here, it's going to sort things by how big they are, how much space they take up. And books are considered standard sized items. But if you're selling other items on Amazon, they're going to be oversized. Some of them are going to be oversized. You can sort through all your inventory that way as well. So that gives you a good look at the FBA, the Manage FBA inventory page. Hopefully you're able to work your way around here a little bit. It's really a fun place to go. It's, it, you're going to need to, to manage your inventory. I mean, I know that selling on Amazon FBA means you're, you're hands off in a lot of regards to logistics and customer service, but there is some manage, management involved. So this is where you're going to find out um, you know, what's going on with your inventory. But stay tuned. We're going to do another video on how to do fulfillment and removal orders and other things regarding managing your, your FBA inventory. So be sure to check out those videos as soon as they're released.